This program made possible in part by grants from the UCF College of Health and Public Affairs, which promotes excellence in undergraduate and graduate education, research, and community service in health-related professions and public affairs. And the UCF College of Medicine, where our goal is to become America's leading partnership medical school and a national leader in medical education and research. And the UCF College of Nursing, which offers high-quality, innovative academic programs that reflect the health care needs of a changing population and meet the needs of today's students. Hello everyone, welcome to For Your Health. I'm Ed Highland, And I'm Kiarna Davis-Wiese. This is an exciting time for nursing students as the nursing program is now its own college. We'll talk about what that means and how nursing stands out as one of the strongest programs on campus. I'm Alicia Callanan Mandigo. Nurses are finding surprising roles in our community. Patient care is just one of them. I'll have that story. Neurology is a fascinating and dynamic field of medicine that continues to see areas of specialization. And as we'll learn today, it's not just the neurologists who are specializing. But first, an update on health news from UCF. Hello, I'm Karen Guin with a news update from UCF's College of Health and Public Affairs. The director of UCF's undergraduate program in athletic training Kristen Shellhays has received a top national honor for providing outstanding advising to students. Shellhays received the 2007 New Faculty Advising Award from the National Academic Advising Association at its annual conference in October. Shellhays has been director of UCF's athletic training undergraduate program since 2004. She had previously worked as an athletic trainer in UCF's athletics department. Last summer, Shell Hayes was invited to be the athletic trainer for the U.S. Under-21 Women's National Basketball Team during the World Championship Games in Moscow. The team went on to win the gold medal. During the games, Shell Hayes learned that there are few, if any, athletic trainers in other countries. She returned to the United States with an even greater appreciation for the education athletic trainers receive here and a desire to make athletic training education in the U.S. the best it can be. For information about UCF's athletic training program, visit the address shown on your screen or call 407-823-0010. I'm Karen Guin from the College of Health and Public Affairs. TV medical dramas love to create shows where the doctor is the hero, but many patients depend on highly trained nurses to get them through their illnesses as well. As Alicia Callan and Mandigo found, that's true even in specialized fields like neurology. UCF graduate Susan Toko is a nurse at ORMC who is developing a unique area of expertise. My job is I am a clinical nurse specialist and I, my population that I focus on is neuroscience. She works with a lot of patients who have significant pain, so pain has become a focus for her. Pain is a common problem experienced, especially in the neurosurgical population. The patients with pain that I see quite frequently are patients who have spinal surgery who have back pain. And oftentimes these patients may have been experiencing chronic pain for many years prior to coming into the hospital. And so they have a chronic pain process and then they have an acute pain process related uh, to their surgery. You can call it an expertise, you can call it a niche, but finding an area of specialty such as pain management can add a whole new dynamic to a career. Fortunately now, there, there is some momentum in looking at the treatment of pain at a larger level, at a community, state, and national level. And so to that end, um, there's a pain expo uh, recently that was held at the convention center that I was asked to speak at. And it was a wonderful opportunity to talk about what we're doing uh, in, in the hospital setting and sharing that with the um, with the community. 
One of the big issues surrounding pain management is the patient's own concerns about whether it's okay to take medication. So one of the things that I was so happy to do, um, being invited to speak at the Pain Expo, was to really talk about the difference between addiction and dependency and tolerance because these labels are very inappropriately applied to patients in pain. And oftentimes my patients who've had very substantial surgeries are being told not to take the pain medication because there's a fear by themselves or someone else that they're going to become one of these addicted persons that you see on the evening news. Toko's focus on pain helps her patients better understand how to manage their pain, and it's open doors for her professionally. One of the things that has been exciting for me in, in looking at pain in this area, it is very exciting to, to be able to have the opportunity for professional growth, to be able to speak at a community uh, level and state level and different opportunities. Um, when I was pursuing the clinical nurse specialist role, I didn't really anticipate that I was going to be having these opportunities and I had thought, oh, that's a little bit intimidating, but actually it's been a wonderful opportunity for professional growth. Colleague Susan Dempsey helped Toko develop her expertise in pain management. We'll look at what that expertise has meant for Dempsey just ahead. I'm Alicia Callanan Mandigo for your help. Nurses who work with a specific chronic illness such as psoriasis can find themselves with a very specialized career that can lead to numbers of possibilities ranging from the lecture circuit to research. In fact, nursing today is quite a bit different from the ideas we all grew up with. Even educational opportunities have changed with many nursing students going on to get their masters and occasionally even a doctorate as well. From here on out, nursing students are attending their own college for the first time at UCF. It's a big move, and joining us today to talk about it is the College of Nursing's new dean, Dr. Jean Lunar. Thanks so much for being here and talking about this. It's very, very exciting. It is for an UCF. exciting time. I think most people have no clue what the difference it is mm -hmm. from going from the School of Nursing to the College of mm -hmm. Nursing and why it's such a big deal and, and what a big job it was, too. Right. Well, we were a department within a college, embedded within a larger college. And due to the strength of the program and the significance of our research and so forth, we were able to establish ourselves to be a freestanding college, which means that we then have the ability to uh, really attract more students and students really focused on going to a college of nursing. Uh, faculty interested in working at a College of Nursing. It's more prestigious? Um, much more prestigious. And in fact, we were one of the very few in the country um, not to be a standalone college, recognized as a standalone college. Tell us a little so, more, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, just no, tell us a little more about getting into uh, uh, the doctorate program and why that's important for, for the, the College of Nursing. Right, to have a, co to have a doctoral pro program, and we have a PhD in nursing program, and now just opened a second doctoral program, uh, a doctor of nursing practice, but to have a doctoral program really demonstrates that you have the faculty scholarship, the faculty research, um, that you have a higher level of funding and opportunities for students, for mentoring of new students, um, to bring students in to focus on the areas of research where your faculty are specialists. I think nursing is probably <coughs> one of the few uh, careers in medicine that people really don't understand how varied it is, all the different specialties there are, the difference in the degrees and the difference in nurses. And I know we don't have a time to go through all of them, but just in a, in a nutshell, the difference from going from an LPN to a PhD. Right. So people may be interested, kids may be interested watching, I want to become a nurse, and they know what, to, what their goal would be. Absolutely, and there are a variety of ways to be a nurse. You can go to an associate degree program in a community college to get your RN. You can come to a four-year program and get your RN as well, along with your baccalaureate degree. That's what we have at UCF. Uh, we also have a way to transition from an associate degree RN to a baccalaureate degree RN. Um, so what does that mean in the job mm -hmm. force, though? Well, what it means is that uh, while both are prepared to be registered nurses, your baccalaureate prepared nurse has more um, critical thinking skills, more time to look at more theoretical approaches to patient care, and um, really a deeper understanding and the liberal arts basis for the nursing profession. 
seems like everyone that knows a nurse also knows that that nurse has a story. What kind of prompted them to get mm -hmm. into it? Uh, if you would mind sharing, maybe you'd give us an idea of what got you into nursing, but also uh, kind of relate that, if you will, to mm -hmm. the many different areas that, that you can get into if you become a nurse. Sure. Well, my particular story is really focused on um, a grandmother who was very ill with Parkinson's disease. And she was in a chronic ho chronically uh, disease hospital in, in New York. And uh, I was concerned, I was very young, and concerned that the nurses really were not, or the people were not there attending to her every need. And so I started to uh, do those things that I felt really needed to be done for her. So you actually started and taking care of her? I did, I did. And um, did so until her death, and realized at a very young age that I wanted to be a nurse. I really needed to be there, wanted to deliver that patient care. Um, felt the importance to have the connection to the patient and uh, wanted someone to be concerned about the patient, concerned about the family and that really is where nursing comes in. You know we were, we have been both medical reporters <coughs> for many many years and I think Ed will tell you the same thing I will, so many times we go and interview patients mm -hmm. and they would tell us things and then the doctor would see the story and say they never said that to me and it almost seemed like they were Maybe intimidated by the physicians, but the nurses always knew. The nurse right. has the ear and, and often the heart when in those kind of situations. Well, and they're 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So really it's the nurse who is there at the bedside, connecting with the family, connecting with the other health care members of the team, and really bringing people together and helping to be an advocate for that patient. You talk about at the bedside, but that's not the only kind of nurse there, nurse there is. Absolutely. There are so many different career paths one can take today. It's exciting. From nurse practitioner, working in a primary care setting in your own office, um, to nurse anesthetist in the operating room, to school nurse, very important critical area, school nursing, um, to the nurse who's working in public health, community health. Um, really, it's wide open. Even in, in large insurance companies and industries uh -huh. and mm -hmm. big Private corporations. Business. Right. And with so many different options, uh, we still hear uh, on a regular basis that the, there is a nursing shortage. It's a critical need right now. And how are you getting out? How are you spreading the word that there are many options, there's many possibilities, and a nurse literally can do just about everything, especially when we're talking about nurse practitioners. That's correct. Well, what we're doing is um, we're really taking a, a, a real um, unique approach, and that is to look at multiple ways that we can prepare our students, having them out in the community, in the hospital setting, working with uh, different community partnerships so they get a chance to see all of the varied ways that they can influence care. And then um, we really focus on a curriculum that has very targeted uh, strengths working with a community of interest. And we have 15 community areas that we've identified. And our students stay in that community for their entire curriculum while going to the hospital, working with, say, the school, working with uh, public health. So the student really gets to appreciate that the patient's in the hospital for a short time, but they live in a community. And so they need to know the resources in the community, how to access additional resources, and where different care can come from. And so it's, it's a unique way to educate students. Traditionally, you think of nursing as a field for women. Right. And I told you I ha had a best friend, and, and she used to have to go for chemotherapy a lot, and her favorite nurse was a man. Right. And I wonder if there's a way to get that word out that it is a wonderful career for men. It really is. Um, I can tell you that we have more men in our nursing program than ever before. Cool. Which what is do you think really that wonderful. Is? I think the word is getting out. I think it's becoming clear that it's a, um, a profession for everyone. Uh, and uh, we want to have more men. We need to have ethnic diversity. We need to have our health care providers look like the population we're caring for. Um, and I think that word is getting out as well. I think we're doing a better job of explaining what nursing is all about. And we're doing a better job of communicating with the public about the importance of having a professional nurse at your side. We have many more questions for Jean Lunar, but we're going to take a short break. We'll be back, talk a little bit more about nursing, and also talk about an update on our new medical school. So don't go away.
We're back. We're talking with Dr. Jean Lunar, who's the dean of the New College of Nursing. And we were just getting into talking about needing ethnic diversity, needing men in the nursing profession. And, you know, I remember in college, when you're getting towards your senior year, you start worrying, am I going to get a job? And the, the percentages of people who actually get jobs in the thing they studied and in broadcasting it was quite quite small and, and <laughs> doing a good becoming very religious towards the end of my <laughs> senior year. But in nursing, right. I mean, there it's wide open for right. people. And right. it's it's there waiting for them, mm -hmm. beckoning them, giving them not only jobs but perks. It really is. It's a wonderful profession. And it really is not just a job, it's a career. Mm -hmm. um, when you enter nursing at whatever level, there are so many opportunities to um, have continuing education and to go up uh, further with your educational process, to get a master's degree, be able to teach in nursing. We have a huge need for faculty in nursing right now. That's that really, been a bigger shortage than the nursing It really is. It's a about. very critical issue for us um, in that folks have not really focused on teaching the next generation and so that's become an area of emphasis, emphasis for us at UCF where we've put together a completely online nurse educator program uh, that includes an internship the last semester working in a local school or an area that you maybe are interested in where you want to teach and so what we found is that we have lots of students for that program and all of our graduates are getting jobs instantly um, and are having a ball uh, working with the community college nursing programs, working in our program and on others. So, so. It's, you said online, so they don't even have to go into class, everything's there from home after they come home from work or? That's correct. Okay. Actually we have several online programs. Uh, the nurse educator program, nursing leadership and management, another program at the master's level, totally online. We had actually one of the first RN to BSN programs in the state of Florida, mm. totally online. Now, are we looking at the possibility of, of, of becoming more of a magnet? I mean, obviously, with the establishment of the College of Nursing, that, that's a huge plus. You can actually go out and you can promote that. We have uh, the medical uh, school coming online, mm -hmm. but perhaps more importantly, in some respects, there's a VA hospital that's been proposed right. for the area, a place where we can actually have a training ground, uh, additional training ground, in addition to the local hospitals that are already here. And Nemours has been discussed as a possible addition as well with the Children's Hospital down at the, uh, the Health Science campus there like Nona. Right. I think that the UCF College of Nursing has really demonstrated its strength and its ability to be a preeminent nursing program in the nation and we're looking forward to now having the opportunity to work with medicine. Um, this is a unique opportunity where you've got a brand new medical school and a very strong nursing program to come together and to share educational experiences. We need to be working as healthcare team members. And to do that, you really need to be in the classroom together, understanding each other's profession, and then how to best deliver nursing care and medical care together. And so working in simulation labs uh, will be one perspective of what we'll be doing uh, with the medical school. We talked a little bit about um, the nursing shortage and we also talked about the different types of degrees and how far you can go with your education. And there's a study that says the amount of nurses, the number of nurses, and the, the amount of their education is in direct proportion to outcomes of a patient. We do have that literature now and that really has been able to help us um, and support the notion that we need baccalaureate prepared nurses and higher um, at the bedside taking care of our patients. Um, it is directly related to outcomes and uh, in that way we are looking at new models of care as well. Looking at um, what we call a clinical nurse leader, a master's prepared nurse with generalist background so they're at the bedside directing care to help fill in those gaps that we think have been there and are part of the issue with um, patients not seeing a nurse as often as they'd like to or coordination of care. How we does that come about, if you will? Um, in the time we have remaining, I'd, I'd be very mm -hmm. curious to find out 
how we come up with the areas, as you were just discussing, uh, it, it, do you recognize the need and then create that area? I mean, it's, it's not a willy-nilly thing. You've got to get staff. You've got to right. devise a curriculum, obviously. But uh, you, you've got to have a crystal ball. You've got to be able to see what the needs are and then devise the program and the curriculum to, to match up with that and then find the students. Right, right. Well, we really stay on top of the national data and the national trends and understanding our local population, um, close partnerships with our hospitals and other healthcare agencies. And together we then talk about what the needs are and work together to meet those needs. And so together with the healthcare agencies and the faculty, we come together and help to devise the programs and meet the needs that we see here as well as across the nation. And that's another field of nursing, is to do that. That's right. To figure that out. It's probably more opportunity and more choices than ever before. Ever before. And nurses do more than mm -hmm. ever before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dr. Jean Luter, thank you so much for coming by. Tell us about this exciting uh, new field. And congratulations also be for becoming the dean of the new College of Nursing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there are lots of changes and new plans for the UCF College of Medicine as well, coming to our Lake Nona campus in 2009. Here's the latest update. University of Central Florida's College of Medicine received preliminary accreditation in February. The accrediting agency said that the plan for the college is worthy of emulation in several areas. For example, it does a good job of using university resources such as information technology. They said that our College of Medicine had the potential to be a national model, once again, for other medical schools in our knowledge management and assessment systems. And these are currently in development. And I, want, I, I just want you to know how pleased I am that we were able to achieve this in our very first site visit. President John Hitt added to the list of university resources that will help make the college a model for 21st century medical education bringing in uh, the tremendous capabilities we have in simulation and training uh, into the curriculum uh, and the uh, tremendous advantages in imaging uh, that our uh, Center for Optics and, and Photonics, Center of Excellence in Optics and Photonics and College of Optics and Photonics uh, make possible here uh, at the university. So we've got uh, some huge advantages in Orlando and specifically at UCF. The college expects to begin reviewing student applications in summer 2008 and open its doors in fall 2009. Sometimes being a healthcare professional takes you out of the realm of patient care and into the lecture hall. It's just one of the many ways nurses help to support our community. When clinical nurse specialist Susan Dempsey was a student, she was told to find a need and then fill it. She saw a need in pain management. She is now an expert. In 1999, I had the opportunity to start a pain resource uh, nurse training program. And so what our whole purpose of that was to be able to pull and see, I call it seeding, pain management throughout the organization. We have a large organization of six hospitals. So my goal was to have a nurse from day shift, night shift, uh, represented and educated, and they became the expert or pain resource nurse. Launching a pain resource nursing training program is just one resulting opportunity. There are so many directions a career could go in these days. The patient bedside is just one of the places a nurse could find herself on any given day. Her pain expertise helped to land her on a three-person research team which looked at improvement in pain management. She's even been involved in legislative changes. I looked for opportunities to work with organizations within the state and the Florida Pain Initiative was one of those, those organizations. I've been a, uh, a member of that for 13 years. As soon as I became an advanced practice nurse, I joined uh, the Florida, it was the Florida Cancer Pain Initiative, now it's the Florida Pain Initiative. And then I became on the board about six years ago and have stayed on that. And with it, I've had the opportunity to look at legislative changes within our state as well as national and be able to impact that. But she says what she really loves now is passing on her knowledge. But I have to say, uh, the excitement, it, 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 it fuels you because the nurses learn, the physicians learn, the patient's outcome improves, and then you, you just find yourself um, more of an expert that you never thought you were, but you become a part of 
that movement that is um, so worthwhile to, to patients and their families. I'm Alicia Callanan Mandigo for your health. So with that, it's time for us to say goodbye. I'm Charna Davis-Wiese. And I'm Ed Hyland. Thanks for joining us. See you next time on For Your Health.